Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here and welcome back to Eve Talk, your weekly look at the market in EVE Online. And well, I don't have a lot of uh, updates for EVE Online. Don't think CCP uh, came out with uh, any concrete news or anything like that on their plans for the next few patches. But we of course still know what should be on the radar are more changes to Faction Warfare, especially to allow us to take part in Faction Warfare activities without leaving our corporation and our alliance, something that I'm definitely looking forward to uh, because that's not something that I want to do uh, but we also do know that there is a sale happening I actually received the email about this one but it should be in the new Eden store so that could be pretty interesting to look at uh, other than that I do want to give you guys a quick update um, I will be uh, like very busy in yeah, next one and a half to two months at work I basically have to uh, give a, a training to like a hundred people so uh, we will do our best to keep up with everything, but uh, work and real life, of course, comes first. So let's dive into the new Eden store here, first of all, and see what's happening. So we've got an Omega sale happening. Uh, I think it was like 10% off, ex extra, an extra 10% off of the bundles, and then you can get an extra uh, skin uh, on, on that one as well. So uh, you can see those here. If you go to the services, you can see where the packages are with the uh, cheaper Omega Time and the extra skin as well. And so there's some extra sales on the Fe Dragon Phoenix skins as well. Uh, so I think it is with the Lunar New Year, the Chinese New Year and all of that good stuff. But uh, yeah, you can get some cheaper Omega Time and some free skins as well. I think those red uh, skins actually look pretty cool. So we're going to dive right into the market. And as always, we start with the pilot services coming in at two minutes. And there we go. And let's get straight into that Plex chart where you can see that the dynamic is changing after managing to make its way ab above 5 million. And up at that point, it really looked like we were set for another leg up in the Plex chart. Uh, CCP did come out with a sale, I think it was on the website. So that usually means more supply, which brought us back down to a, a good chunk below 5 million on the chart. But now, of course, we are increasing in price quite, uh, quite quickly again on the sale that's happening in the New Eden store as now more uh, Plex should be used up uh, in the New Eden store and that of course drives up demand. So the prices are at almost 5.2 million for most sellers in GDA 4.4. Let's see if that gap is plugged by the Tranquility Trading Tower. Yes it is. Uh, actually quite a, uh, a lot of activity in the Tranquility Trading Tower uh, here at the forefront of this sale. So that's definitely interesting. Usually when we take a look at this uh, we've got GDA 4.4 that's taking at least the first half dozen trades because it can usually happen through like uh, uh, the app and things like that but now we've got like um, two four six seven trades happening in the tranquility trading tower which does have lower taxes I think by a no, tiny margin maybe um, compared to a uh, GDA 4.4 and uh, as a result uh, that one is really plugging that gap from 5.15 million to 5.2 uh, million perhaps this is what's happening when there is stronger demand and people are just buying everything up uh, it takes a little bit of extra effort to go through the tranquility trading tower and uh, pick up uh, these uh, these plaques and as a result uh, they they are more at the forefront of the cheaper prices when it comes to the buyers well they are of course getting a very very close to that 5 million isk as well so the chart definitely has to catch up to that because the buyers are practically right there on the chart and yeah again very expensive plex prices at the moment which is of course normal as uh, at the moment they are being drained out of the game due to the sale in the new eden store when it comes to the multiple pilot train certificate actually shrugging all of that off well not exactly you can see here how the volumes are now absolutely terrible since you've got a better deal uh, through the new eden store for your omega time um, why are you then going to invest in a, a multiple pilot train certificate might as well uh, do the account of an alt rather than a second character 1.9 billion for the sellers 1.8 billion for the buyers that gap has closed not that margin but that spread between sellers and buyers has closed significantly um, and as a result we do have these very 
low volumes i think because at the moment the action is right here in the plex market skill extractors are following the plex chart but i would say this looks a lot more violent that's probably because we start out at a 300 million mark here at the lower end uh, but uh, we were above 500 million again that sale pushing us below 400 million so that was definitely a significant 20 percent drop and then we recovered from that it's going to be interesting to see if we make our way back above the 500 million on the chart on what's happening with plex basically right now sellers are at 490 so they're still doing all right 462 million for the buyer as well now that i think about it it's not because there's more plex being drained out of the market that we should get an immediate effect on the skill extractors but a little bit of a delayed effect uh, is definitely possible uh, due to well their connection of course you can buy extractors with plex those become more expensive so you'll have a little bit of a lag and not an immediate response here but i do think we'll make our way back about 500 million by next week now we get the skill injectors of course that uh, combine a little bit of everything they are still above 900 million seeing a little bit of pressure on that one but uh, 925 million for the sellers and 860 million for the buyers that is i think a pretty normal spread actually at these pretty high price points volumes though uh, are starting to suffer from these high prices small skill injectors then doing the same thing but again a little bit more pronounced there really is a, a, its own little market here uh, going back below 190 million and volumes actually a little bit more robust than in the large skill injectors here we're talking 185 million for the sellers 174 million for the buyers 10 million 11 million spread also not as good i think as the large skill injectors after that we have our daily alpha injectors that have made their way up above the 50 million mark a little bit of pressure here but i don't think we're gonna go below that without ccp coming in 52 million now for the sellers 45 million for the buyers bit of spread on that one 7 million is definitely more than 10 percent uh volumes are on the seller side and i think they will be dominating the market so i think for now uh, if you are an alpha player and your goal is that daily alpha injector, a bit of extra effort to get above that 50 million will be needed. Then we've got our hyper cores that are also uh, immediately responding to what's happening with Plex because we are going down all of a sudden to a price point that was almost at 600,000 disc. Sellers now coming in at, what the hell is that? 5 million? Isk? Navy assembly plant? Oh. Okay, not sure why are these prices reversed? Did I click on something? Let's take a look at Plex. Yeah, what the hell? I reversed the prices somehow. Uh, I must have clicked on this then. <laughs> Sorry about that. But let's get back then to those hyper cores. There we go. So we were practically at 600,000 disc. Now we're at 570,000 for the sellers, 491,000 for the buyers. And uh, as a result, I would say we are seeing that immediate response between Plex and the Hyper Course, whereas we're expecting a delayed response between Plex and Skill Extractors. So overall, we are back in pretty expensive territory, but there's still some CCP sales action that is uh, dictating a lot of the sharper moves in the pilot services. Next up, we have the mineral market coming in at 8.35. As always, we start with the Tritanium chart that is holding on to the 4 ISK now, but definitely had to give up that 4.5 here. Uh, sellers coming in at 4.26. We do not want to see outside the GDA for this. Just too spread out. 4.26 for the sellers, 4.13 for the buyers. So again, very narrow spreads, but clearly uh, moving down a notch from above 4.5 for the sellers to well below that. And now it's a 4 to 4.30 is range of four titanium it's still okay uh, but uh, we have seen that on the peaks of high demand we can do better here um, so overall i'm i'm in the mixed ballpark here i would sell a part especially of course if you need liquid disc uh, i would sell the titanium that i'm mining but otherwise i would also hold back a little bit make sure that i'm building up a little bit of stock uh, just in case of something exploding uh, in uh, in nullsec something big happening there that could really be an opportunity to sell at better prices than this 
pyrite is also actually turning the corner so I, now i'm definitely uh, saying that uh, for tritanium that's the tactic that i would use because we landed on 10 isk and then this was of course the real challenge are we going to go below that and looking for another new price point just like for tritanium or is there something else that's going to happen and so for pyrite the market says no we're not really willing to go below 10 isk for this one we're back at 1030 to 1090 for most sellers and then still above 10 isk for the buyers as well so very impressive actually i thought perhaps we ha we would have enough momentum after a couple of months here to go through that 10 isk but no we are actually bouncing up a little bit from that we'll see of course if this all of a sudden brings in some speculative supply that could change the picture again Again, so it's still up in the air if this is structural or not but for now the market is easily defending the 10 isk and for me that's again same story i would do like close to a 50 50 if i'm making pyrite i would sell half of it keep half of it and hope for like maybe a 12 or something like that or something big happening somewhere then we've got mixalom that has an absolutely terrible chart goes to 10,000 disc and more for some reason uh, here while well, this is the best I can do at the moment uh, we are still trending down so we'll have to take a look at the actual prices well we are below the 60 uh, so that's uh, 59.67 for the first sellers 56.71 for the buyers still a bit of well not a lot of spread but yeah, buyers still trying to go even lower on Mixon and we lost the 60 isk for those sellers so they gave up we are going to start to move in that new range could be a 55 to 60 for the foreseeable future so that's definitely a different story from the pyrite story very interesting i thought we would also see uh, Mixon turn the corner considering what pyrite has done but that is not the case then let's see if the other minerals can tell us more here is uh, isogen nice and flat above the 500 at its highest range for the year for several years actually at this point 530 for the sellers 504 for the buyers as well they have to go above 500 disc that gives us a nice uh, bit of uh, of support i think at this price range and then of course it's this 80 million 230 million that's waiting us at 534 uh, 35 that's keeping us in check once we get through those i again think that there is potential for higher isogen prices but but of course the story is different from uh, like 10 months ago, six months ago, where basically once we got through those, we would have uh, practically an upward trajectory without any stopping. I do think now that specula speculation uh, changes into the game, uh, into demand for isogen itself and things like that and supply as well can actually have an impact and can start uh, seeing the price move up and down rather than just up on that approach potential then we've got our noxium chart that's actually showing signs of more pressure going straight through the thousand isk and settling for this week at 920 for the sellers and 888 for the buyers definitely more spread here and uh, if you saw uh, that on the ticker what has been happening with megasite there could really be uh, something changing in the high-end minerals uh, with more of those supplies that are finally found making their way to the market let's see if zydrine is confirming that yes look at that zydrine also continuing to go down going below the 2500 isk mark and uh, yeah no signs of stopping just yet 2300 for the sellers still above 2000 for the buyers at 2076 isk but clearly we are now starting to see pressure a lot more pressure on the high-end minerals which is of course uh, relatively good news for something like tritanium and pyrite that's actually keep, keeping up uh, with its price and then megasite you already saw that potentially now as well going below the 2500 disc only just still the most expensive tech one mineral but losing 25 on the sellers is pretty big 2400 for the buyers though so here we have uh, a very competitive market people are still somewhat desperate for megasite but slowly supply is pushing the prices back down here so i, I would say here we are starting to really see the uh, changes due to ccp uh, intervening and uh, solving bottlenecks for um uh, for uh, for production especially capital ship production with with of course our one exception uh, which to me is an indication that we will eventually go higher for isogen uh, because this one is just shrugging that off at this point except for the speculative dive that it took very 
relatively quickly recover from that and now we're basically uh, at this 500 disc mark and finally we still have a more fight that's made its way back above 40,000 but is also hesitating to really break out and change the dynamic here 41,000 for the sellers 38,000 for the buyers actually a bit of a spread here as well uh, that's opening up so buyers trying to they know that from time to time they can get more fight below 40k and that's exactly what they're trying to do at this point any more supply uh, can pretty quickly change that uh, 40 handle here for the sellers overall for minerals uh, we're basically seeing pressure a little bit of relief for industrialists that need to buy their minerals um, and i would say then comparing the entire market to what's happening in high sec definitely pretty good news for those that have tritanium and pyrite on the menu because uh, i would say yeah a 50 50 here does make a lot of sense you're making isk that's decent but not the best opportunity you're keeping a little bit of powder dry for potentially something uh, changing uh, drastically next up we have the pi market coming in at 1540 And as you guys know, my expectation here is that uh, this will become the next target for CCP as I think the bottlenecks will have moved from minerals to PI for capital production. But let's go through the list and I haven't spotted anything, uh, any announcement from CCP. So here are the broadcast notes. You can see last week we were at 2.5 million one year high points so that you lose a bit of ground from that is definitely normal. But 2.25 million for the sellers and almost 2 million for the buyers bit more spread than uh you know uh what i expected but we are definitely still extremely expensive for the sellers volumes are doing okay as well then we've got our construction blocks that are back at 10,000 disc or just above that even for the average price 10,200 for the sellers 97 for the buyers that's definitely a strong demand spread right here and above 10k is well pretty high on the chart not crazy high for a refined pi material looking back at it historically uh, but definitely pretty good i would say uh, on on this full one year chart i'm as i've said many times at this point i'm selling all the pi that i'm making almost right away then we get coolants still healthily above the 10,000 disc as well uh, in fact it's 11,000 for the sellers 10.6 for the buyers so again that's way less than 10 percent between sellers and buyers that is not a lot and uh, as a result i think this is showing again very strong demand then we've got enriched uranium that tried to make its way back to 10,000 disc not even on crazy volumes but look at uh, that opportunity being snagged up anyone loves enriched uranium at around 10,000 disc and so we are making our way back to 12.5 uh, on the chart 12,400 for the sellers buyers though a bit more careful here still below 10,000 is so this does happen from time to time which is interesting but we've been seeing that for the last couple of months where a couple of individual uh, uh, PI materials have uh, a little bit more spread that opens up showing that maybe demand is not as uniformly strong as it was for instance here in the October to December period where we could even get 15 and 13,000 isk for enriched uranium and buyers had no choice but to practically follow suit uh, well minerals that might be part of the equation there as well we are getting a bit of relief there perhaps because the forges are slowing down a little bit maybe nullsec maybe uh, low sec uh, that faction warfare has settled into the new routines all of that stuff is possible uh, but overall i think that uh, we are still looking at crazy good prices for pi and then advanced pi of course is the most directly related to uh, these uh, large ship productions and so here we've got integrity response zone showing 3 million and up on the chart it is indeed 3.1 million for the sellers 2.75 million for the buyers one year high point uh, happening right now in integrity response drones our mechanical parts are easily staying above 10,000 disc again tried to go back down there but look at the last couple of days in data points 11,700 for the sellers and 10.9 for the buyers okay even slightly narrow margin despite how quickly here we are moving to that new range then we get miniature electronics um, losing a bit of ground but 
how sustainable is a 15,000 plus price for something that is uh, perhaps a little bit harder to make than coolants uh, for instance but it's, it's basically still in the same category right why are you going to bring and try to make more uh, coolants or more construction blocks at 10k when you get miniature electronics selling at 15k that brings the price down to 14,500 13 5 plus for the sellers uh, for the buyers as well so very very strong price right here next we've got our nano factory still easily above a million as well 1.25 not enough supply buyers though still below a million they are willing to wait it out so far i think they'll give up eventually then we get organic mortar applicators also above a million at 1 1 buyers also still below 1 million trying to keep things in check a little bit and here we've got our first big reversal you could say but again uh look at where we start this downtrend all of a sudden we were at 1.5 million one year high points that of course just bring in this volume which part of it is going to be speculators that are saying best price for a year especially if you bought at like 750 that's a 100 percent profit margin potentially obviously you're going to get some more supply coming in we're still at 1.2 million so healthily above a million and again those buyers though maybe they know something we don't or they're uh, gambling uh, or, or taking the same stance as i am that eventually we will see ccp do something about it there's still trying to buy below a million as well which which was i mean they didn't back then but look at how quickly this uh, this gets back to down to a million for um, for those buyers that's quite surprising for something that for several weeks had to be bought at like 1.3 million then we've got the robotics that's still above 90k on average 94 to 90 thousand for the buyers so that's definitely a narrow spread as well our rocket fuels are still doing great 14,700 for refined pi material 13.8 so even here at something that is almost 15,000 disc and is hovering at the highest price range that it has for the entire year you have less than a thousand disc in spread and when you get to 15k you would actually expect a 10 percent of around 1500 so this is very narrow this is a lot of demand still in most of the pi market self-harmonizing power cores back above 2.2 at 2.3 million for the sellers 2.1 for the buyers our smart fab unit so we've got a couple of these that of course have very irregular volumes they have a little bit more spread and a little bit more volatility in the chart but if again we look at this full one year chart we start at 50,000 disc on average we're at 82 for the sellers 76 for the buyers pretty good week for the smart fab unit producers sterile conduits are easily staying above a million as well volumes are quite strong 1.4 to 1.1 then we get our supercomputers that are just building up even more here uh one year high point and a little bit of a pullback when we went above 130,000. uh but it's still like really really expensive 120 for the sellers 108 for the buyers synthetic oil uh, a bit of a spoiler last click but yeah we went to 15,000 disc here as well and there's not even it doesn't even look like there's that much supply to take advantage of it so we do pull back uh, but we are still at 14,600 for the sellers 12,750 for the buyers they have no choice they can't stay below 10,000 disc on this one so again a great time to produce and sell synthetic synapses reached another one year high point at 130 uh, it pulls back a little bit from that 120 uh, still though for the sellers and 130 coming into view very quickly so they're just even i think uh in some of these pi markets some of these uh, speculators are starting to get exhausted uh, all the profits are being taken and then that could really set us up for yeah, potentially even higher prices and then again i think uh, uh, a, a central bank that's going to uh, to move in uh, transcranial microcontrollers if we're still above this range then we are still definitely uh, like the 110 115 sellers coming in at 114 buyers first buyer here 100,000 giving up that is definitely a dangerous thing to do now he's really careful it's only a seven day buy order and it's only for quantity one um, so maybe just very quickly gets filled for some reason but um, if this is like psychological if maybe a smart seller <laughs> puts up this sell order and a few more people come in trying to buy above 100,000 disc you are looking 
uh, at the floor here that is way above uh, anything we've had for the entire year. Water cooled CPU then staying above 7.5 again look at the regular volumes uh, right here so that one always struggled a little bit doing better on the volumes and then the price is better but still compared to everything else 8200 for the sellers 76 for the buyers the spread is nice uh, but the refined pi material below 10,000 disc is probably not the most popular i'm guessing that there's like big reserves and it's really easy to produce so water cooled cpu is still quite plentiful and then our wetware mainframes are also seeing a nice pullback uh, after again reaching a one year high point at 2.5 million and we are staying at 2.3 for the sellers and 2 million for the buyers so overall pi same story as last week you do have a couple of one year high points that are taking a big uh, break there i think that's partly again speculators that are coming in and taking profits who doesn't want to take profit right up here on the chart i think most of us would uh, want to do that and that of course does have a bit of an impact but overall very very expensive narrow spreads and uh, pi uh, being uh, definitely a nice passive money maker in eve at the moment next we have the advanced moon materials 25 30. So for advanced moon materials, we had that full recovery. And then our first one, I think it was in fact crystalline carbonite. Let's just dive right into that. That made a one year high point and basically being the first one that gave us a sign that maybe um, a bit of exhaustion at the uh, supply side, which is what was nerfed by CCP to cause this reversal right here in November. Um, will bring us into a different market with even higher prices than what we had about last year but it's it was the only one last week and my speculation has been so far that uh the cheapest ones so in the few hundred ranges like right here for crystalline carbonite are the first one that will really uh, where we'll really see where the market is heading but that this will then have to roll through the entire supply chain uh, with uh, items that are more expensive in the tens of thousands of this they have a little bit more inertia to all of these changes but eventually all of this could then lead to tech to ship volatility which is of course what i'm mostly banking on myself but for now here is crystalline carbonite so went to 200 disc or close to that uh, last week and of course here you have another one of these charts where at least some people will take uh, an, uh, some profits off the table and as a result we are back down sellers are still at 157 and then 153 for the buyers but compared to last year this is not that crazy a price anymore but let's see if any of the others had something similar happen so here is titanium carbide for caldari well that was a couple weeks before that where we went almost 200 disc but it has easily been absorbed and you can see here over the last week or so below 150 137 to 137 there is an arrow spread so people do realize that uh, buyers do realize that uh, you have to pay that higher price because just supplies just aren't that plentiful as they were when we could get below on the disc but um, for now they don't see any real problems in the supply chains that would cause us to go to higher prices than 150 for minmatar it's fernite carbide well here we go we are again matching the 150 which is getting pretty close to a one-year high point 147 to 146 for the buyer so this could actually be demand driven rather than supply driven uh, i did see a very cool piece of propaganda on subreddit where it was all about producing uh ships and stuff and everything for minmatar uh, so that's pretty cool and uh, might be partly why all of this is happening maybe some minmatar meta some minmatar faction warfare uh, i've always held the perspective that the minmatar players while they're uh, usually the smallest group they are amongst the most hardcore players in eve online which is pretty cool then we've got our amar carbide which is tungsten carbide well it did do a jump to 250 as well recovered and is staying above 150 let's see 167 to 152 yes it is for now so yeah we still i'm i'm not entirely sure but i still think that there is this potential uh, that these carbides will eventually have to go to uh, a 150 200 on some high points 
and with a little bit of volatility maybe with some action in nullsec maybe even with some action in low sec uh, and faction warfare all of this could really uh, be the start of some more volatility but then we do need that to start to show up in the meta materials as well and so far last week that has not been the case let's take a look at it here is photonic meta materials for galente uh, of course this one had that that crazy pull to 200 for the carbide so we went to 12500 but you can see that we are already recovering and heading for 10,000 disc 10 to 100 for the sellers and 97 for the buyer so this basically has recovered but isn't starting to have problems when for instance fernite carbide shoots up to 200 plus well, there's a little bit of a response but it's not really uh, amplifying the move which eventually I, I personally think could happen right you get some real supply problems you see uh, carbide shoot up in price crazily and then uh, that supply problem is going to show up in other markets as well where potentially well percentage wise you could see some really crazy moves that's what i'm kind of hoping for not sure if it is going to happen of course uh, as nelsic is very very organized and they tend to be pretty good at supplying stuff but uh, here is then non-linear meta materials for kaldari um quite a similar range 13 to 30 to 13,000. so it's it's actually strong demand at the moment that is uh that is keeping the prices decently high but without the volatility that i would love to see then for minmatar it's plasmonic metamaterials actually back below 12.5 13 for the sellers 12 400 for the buyers and apparently those buyers are able to pick up some of these materials and then terahertz for amar is currently at 14,000 for the sellers and 14,000 for the buyers. So we got a bit of a mixed picture here while it's not really super volatile. And unfortunately, the way I see this is that it's more demand driven than uh, supply driven, uh, but we are looking at some higher prices here and there. Um, starting to get into that, we are fully recovered from last year. So then I'm hoping for problems at the source that will really ripple through the entire market we'll see if that works or not we still have the other advanced move materials here is fermionic condensates comfortably landing on 37.5 back at 42,000 for the sellers and 40,000 for the buyers but clearly not a full recovery or uh, speculative volatility in this market ferrogel same story did do nicely to get above 25k but things have settled down since then uh 23,000 for most sellers 22.5 for the buyers fuller rights is managing to stay at the plateau but i think this is that story that i was telling you guys 700 disc that's closer to the source so here you, you've got that new supply reality that's basically cemented in a little bit more than in the more expensive expensive ones hypersynaptic fibers well a little bit of a bump here but quickly absorbed and we're at six to five uh, pretty much stuck here nano transistors again um, four thousand on probably speculation all of this stuff and now supplies are starting to um, settle in nicely I, I would say again we'd need more demands uh, or, or at least in some of the other uh, categories we've seen more demand be able to maintain the price a little bit better in the other advanced boom materials but well, we're kind of struggling with that uh, phenolic composites also landing on 1250 not that much to say pressurized oxidizers doing a little bit better uh, the story here it's one of those newer items so probably has less of um, of, uh, of some reserves uh, in order to weather that storm so this one is clearly at a new range 13600 to 12000 there's a bit more spread here as well uh, you've got a more active market and we're kind of hoping to see these types of volatilities but also on the upside of course in everything else reinforced carbon fiber was also a newer one uh, although the icon has changed uh, to something that's far more uh, common i would say but we are coming back down on this one as well 12400 to 11300 still we are above where we were a year ago so that's looking okay and ceramic fibers also giving up actually uh, so close to the source only 300 to 350 about a week ago but even here supplies are coming in 280 to 277 so it's not looking all that good for those that have been hoping for that volatility in advanced move materials there are better prices but it all depends on demand as far as i can tell next we have our tech 2 ships coming in at 3330 
there we go and let's go through the list unfortunately as i've said i'm not expecting any real volatility but what we do see here is the basilisk moving another step up towards 150 million so clearly now what has happened very quickly uh, again same story in the crystalline carbonites right a full recovery from a year ago uh, that took more time in the metamaterials to recover is now starting to show up in the ship market as well with the basilisk well not doing a full recovery but 150 million for the sellers to 132 for the buyers well the good times are probably over uh, on this one then we get the Cerberus uh, still trying to really get there but look at that 20 day moving average really starting an upward trend in the last couple of weeks currently selling for 145 buyers still at 132 they're trying to open up that gap but will they succeed um it's gonna be hardest to do i think considering what we've seen in the advanced move materials curse also did just uh dive back down substantially after reaching 200 million so that was nice speculative that's tradable uh but then we've got uh this uh, settling down period and then just a slow a slow burn uh starting back towards 150 144 to 129 uh, not exactly the time to buy or sell i would say damnation looking pretty good but another one two three steps full recovery though 350 million for the sellers 305 for the buyers so those that have followed me and managed to buy let's say close to the 250 uh, you are looking at a nice trade opportunity right now um and well I think there could be volatility but it's gonna depend on a lot of factors uh, later down the line so I would fully understand if you see a chart like this and you do have that 100 million profit that you decide to take it right now I, I definitely think that that could actually be the right move and holding on to the ship could turn out to be the mistake uh, a couple of months from now but uh, on the other hand of course if you are hoping for re real speculation uh, there may be a 400 450 or something like that on, on big war uh, some Somewhere could happen as well so it's always tricky uh, you always want more of course but right now on this damnation trade looking pretty good and this is also in my opinion pretty normal uh, the most resource intensive ships will probably be the first to fully recover so here is that damnation at 350 pretty impressive then we get the deacon which is a small ship and that's definitely more what we want to see <laughs> volatility uh full recovery but this will probably come back down so 29 million for the sellers 16 million for the buyers big big spread but here is that what i actually have been hoping for so if you've got those cheap deacons and even a couple months ago or a month ago you could have bought these well below 15 million you've got that nice well close to 100 percent profit that you can take right now and this is of course uh the pattern that we we want to see so uh smaller ships uh, i've mentioned that quite often i think had the best chance of actually showing that volatility so here is your deacon sell opportunity um and uh, it's looking pretty good uh, nice volumes and you're probably going to be able to well sell above 25 shouldn't be a prob problem so that's like 10 million on 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 one of the smallest uh, frigates that's not that bad so yeah there it is and uh, the eagle then is actually coming back down a little bit did reach the 150 uh, 141 to 127 so you are again trying to buy below 130 million and that may be uh, if you really already want to be super active in tech to ship market then this could be the time to jump in on the eagle and then hope that we can see higher prices later down the line the eos um, is recovering now as well 300 million for the sellers 271 not a full recovery just yet um, and we actually had these minimum prices is about 10 days ago that were well below the 250 so let's say that you managed to grab one of these let's just say 240 uh, to be lucky you are looking at potentially a small trade to be had in the eos here as well then we've got the aries uh very nice right jumped up to 70 million is recovering from that landing on the 50 i think 51 to 48 million so unfortunately buying an aries for 30 million is uh, not gonna happen anytime soon unless unless of course now um there's like enough people that are desperate uh, to to sell their aries at the best price they could for the last couple of months then we could see uh, a buy opportunity but 
the sell opportunity was there last week of course flycatcher still surprisingly stable at the current price 42 million to 38 million uh, started the year at 60 50 has been possible on a couple of occasions i'm kind of surprised maybe now that the uh, deacon has done uh, this uh, we could keep an eye on what the destroyers are going to start to do and uh, if you I, I have a couple of uh, cheap fly catchers already of course um, i would say maybe you know if you're completely lagging behind grabbing a fly catcher below 40 million could still be a good plan then we get the guardian uh, clearly trying to move into that new range as well but doing so very slowly 139 to 127 uh, so yeah buying a, a guardian for 100 million those times look to be over unless we can get that volatility rolling of course heretic pretty stable below 40 million not exactly where we want to be look at the spread here as well starting to lower actually then we get the hound starting to come back down that's interesting how these minimum prices are coming down significantly 18 million to unfortunately six uh, almost 16 million for the bars if we go below 15 you've got that definite jumping point even on this full one year chart that's like you're taking profit when you can grab a hound for 15 million we're not there yet maybe we need more patience but maybe of course uh, the new bottom range could be something a little bit higher than that then we've got the Ikitursa, still pretty stable above 500 million, 550 to 510, not much to say. Here is then the Ishtar chart, all right, is that really that the minimum prices are starting to dive down? 149 to 140, well, it's not the best price anymore, um, but we're clearly on the downside here for the Ishtar at the moment. The Kirin actually going back down in price, doing the exact opposite from our Deacon Logistics Frigate. That is interesting if you still want uh, to jump in on this one. 16 million to 13 million for the buyers. No buyers in the market. If you are looking to still jump in on a take to speculation move, this is a chart to look at compared to everything else. You are grabbing a very cheap Kirin. That's definitely an opportunity. Then we've got the Manticore that is also coming back down substantially, 18 million to unfortunately 15.6 million. So not able to break that 15 million, but it really only did so once over the last year. So um, same story, you could definitely consider jumping in on a Manticore. The Nemesis, uh, not enough for me it is uh 17 million too well, it is below 15 million maybe you could set like 15 to 16 million as a new low range to take a look at for the stealth bombers and then hope for that uh for that uh, volatility then we get that nighthawk that is climbing above 300 substantially 323 to 295 so that's that that uh, command ship battle cruiser recovery then we've got our Oniros that has fully recovered pretty quickly. 180 million. As I've said, there seems to be a lot of demand for this. Definitely a sell opportunity. I think I did uh, come in with, when it was below 100 million on a couple of occasions. Yeah, I, I would consider buy, buying an Oniros here, but I always warned that I wouldn't hold more than one. Uh, well, turns out that on this one, that was definitely a bit of a mistake, but this is a nice comeback in volumes as well. 170 million to 152 million. So it's not a doubling of the price, but if you can make 50, 60 million on a trade for the Oniros, that's definitely pretty good. And if you had a couple that you bought below 100 million, you get some powder dry. So maybe a bit of a mistake on this one. I always said that because the volumes are so inconsistent and definitely pretty low for the oneros that i never hold more than one um looking at it here of course i would have loved to have like half a dozen and then slowly sell them at nice profits then we get the purifier that is yeah still basically a little bit too high to do any uh, to maybe sell but uh, i i would want to see higher prices than this maybe a 25 or so 26 million uh, 23 million for the sellers and above 20 for the buyers look at these volumes though 125 126 uh that is a lot of purifiers should start to bring the price back down substantially on any more supply really and that is, of course, the pattern that we're kind of hoping for, that there's still so many Tech 2 ships uh, in that market uh, that, uh, that eventually these higher prices lead to a real crash, a buy opportunity, and then another recovery uh, with a lot of volatility. That's, that's basically what I'm hoping for. Uh, but unfortunately, advanced move materials were showing a different side this time, uh, at least this week. So the Rook is now at 166 to 145. Um, 
I, I would be happy if you get some cheap rooks because those times are over but too early for me to sell uh, saber also starting to come back up but i think on a spread 38 to 36 actually no i don't think so you could have bought well, 35 yeah it's not even that crazy so is that exhaustion on the sellers that's still a decent amount of supply i'm a bit surprised by this upswing uh doesn't feel like it's like a full buyout or anything like that uh, definitely some buying at the lowest end of the chart though so that's maybe normal but not to, not the volatility that i would have loved to see of course the scalpel is back uh pretty low so 16.7 to 13 million i would say again if you're looking to still jump in uh, logistics frigate for 13 million could just be the ticket and you saw that it can happen right here you've got uh 20 plus million that was uh, on the books early january then we get the scimitar that is yeah, slowly edging up uh, 129 to 114 yeah a little bit too late basically to still jump in then we get the slip near another full recovery for a command ship uh, 350 five for the sellers 326 for the buyers uh, again if back in the summer times you bought some command ships uh, on the cheap you are looking at a nice profit vagabond uh, coming back down all right how close to 130 143 to 133 um, I would say you can see here that a 180 has been possible once, twice in the last couple of months. So coming in even at a 135 or so is not that bad. And then we get the Zarmast that is back below 500 million, 476 to 450. All right, for Triglavians, we've got a bit of pressure, but nothing all too pronounced. So in general, for Take Two ships, uh, it's still very tricky. Uh, and unfortunately, Advanced Moon Materials is not starting the wave as I thought it would. Uh, but there are clearly opportunities here and there. You just have to, number one, be patient and, and really keep a close eye on the market to spot opportunities like here for the Deacon. Uh, and also, of course, to do the opposite to jump in at the right time so it's very work intensive if you're looking to do take two trading at the moment we don't even have a good handle at least i don't on the ranges to jump in uh just yet uh so that's basically what we have to do if we want to trade in take two ships in my opinion is is do your homework and and keep going keep keep a close eye on it and not necessarily uh trade every single day but really wait for these best opportunities like this one Next, we have the Tech Tree ship market. 46, uh, 10. There we go. As always, we will start with the destroyers. And while well, the Confessor made its way above 50 million, but unfortunately, you can see here how the spread has followed suit nicely 52.6 to 47.6. That's 5 million difference. Uh, that is not all that much. It's kind of, well, actually, it's maybe a little bit more then during these lower prices but the volumes though are still so low that i wouldn't call this uh, a trade opportunity then we get the heck it that's interesting all right all right uh tactical destroyers what the hell is happening but we did just get a jump in the hecate to 60 million isk we're back at 59 for the sellers and 49 for the buyers and obviously if you manage to buy uh between 45 and 50 46 47 that is starting to be a tradable spread and on a decent enough timeline right here early january to late january and you've got that 15 uh, million profit um, potential so that's actually pretty nice a first uh, sign that maybe something is changing here then we've got the jackdaw that's also making its way above 55 million still a little bit slow for my taste but on the other hand a month ago could have bought these for 45 million we're now looking at 50 million yeah, that that's uh, first one 58 million is a little bit better so it's not as good as the hecate but there's definitely a bit of trade potential that is showing up here and then uh this vapor is also starting to go back up a little bit 46 million for the sellers though 42 for the buyers that is not enough uh to wet my appetite but the hecate is clearly something we haven't seen for many many months here 
in the uh, tactical destroyer market so could this be the start of something of a different dynamic in the market has uh, for some reason have the tactical destroyers taken their place again uh, in, in a little bit of interest in the meta it is possible so very very interesting uh, in my book to see this sudden jump here in the Hecate definitely something to uh, keep an eye out for because I always loved trading in the tactical destroyers market uh, because there you didn't have to take keep an eye on it every single day it was far more predictable let's take a look at the cruisers next here is the legion still very stable slowly going down below 200 million at 199 to 183 a uh, decent spread between sellers and buyers but clearly not a buy opportunity yet then we've got the loki a little bit more volatility here and you can see unfortunately the buyer is not moving to the 180 just yet at 198 to 185 for the first one i'd need a little bit more patience and lower buy price to jump back in but obviously if you can buy below 180 and you can sell at 200 million which happened here which happened here which happened here which happened here that is something that's far better for traders then we've got the pro that is slowly coming back down as well but again buyers are still willing to pony up the isk one 200 million for the sellers and 188 for the buyers is not exactly the buy opportunity just yet and then the uh, the tango actually really strong market on this one 205 for the sellers 187 for the buyers as well starting to see similar spread across all three of them um, but uh, clearly this one is, is pretty damn popular at the moment going well above 200 million uh, whereas the Loki was like the most popular in general that is uh, showing a little bit more volatility uh, in general on, on its chart so for Tech 3 cruisers you do have some more predictable patterns uh, I would again wait for like a below 180 that's like pretty much a sure thing across the board except maybe the Proteus I think the Proteus um yeah no actually for the Proteus that seems to be the pattern as well and if this has any momentum same here with the Loki then uh it could happen and you could get your buy opportunity below 180 for tech tree cruisers um so nice I, I like what we just saw in the destroyers maybe this is the start of something and what could then be a catalyst is the extra product for the week which is actually a pretty big one it is gas products coming in at 50 30. So let's see if we can spot some trends here because of course we've got all these new faction warfare ships and all of that production that should take a lot of uh, gas cloud materials. We'll, we'll start with the fullerines. I don't think that one is tied into that production cycle but it's more tied with Tech 3 cruisers I believe. Maybe Tech 3 destroyers as well. Well pretty expensive and actually for the last 8 months or so smack in the middle of the chart from the way I look at it. 14k to 12k um yeah actually not a lot to say on this one c32 actually getting more expensive getting to 25,000 23.4 to 22.5 so pretty expensive here c32 plateauing at 45,000 super expensive full right c50 had a little bit of a pullback that is being absorbed now but it's, it's basically in the middle of the last uh, eight or nine months then we get c 540 same story pretty much in the middle so average to above average c60 i don't see anything all too drastic in in c70 either c72 10,000 disc maybe a bit above average and then c84 right on the average uh, since that first big jump here in may of course which was the siege green update that opened up production for um what was it? Uh, mostly Dreadnoughts, I think, uh, definitely changed the most there. But we are pretty average with a couple of high exceptions in the full right. So there's not that much to say on that perspective from me. Um, yeah, it's looking like it's decently supplies. Volumes are pretty strong, of course, since the November expansion as well, where we got all of that extra production. Uh, but the market seems to be able to weather that pretty well. Then we've got our Sito and Miko story. So here is Amber Sito Serosin. That is clearly something that has changed considerably with the expansion. You can see here we were pretty low at 50k. We jumped up to 100,000 disc and we are still there. In fact, 130 for the sellers in Jita. Uh, anything happening? Nope. In the trade hub? Nope. It is not. So very, very expensive amber cito serosin, and clearly this is uh, like the winner uh, in the raw materials for, or one of the winners for that all of that faction warfare production 
uh, stuff. So Ambrosito Seracin, very expensive, 100,000 disc, 50% increase since the expansion. Uh, then we get Amber Miko, that's well also pretty expensive on the full one year chart. Had a bit more of a speculative bubble here up to 130 uh, with the expansion, but actually recovered a little bit from that. Um, still very expensive on the highest range for the year. Azure Sito is starting to come back down. That's interesting and maybe that is giving a little bit of breathing room to those tactical shores. I'm not fully sure how all of those cycles work, but look at that coming down to 30K, 40,000 to 30,000 for the buyers. There just isn't enough demand for Azure Sito uh, to stay that expensive. And so here you could say that the expansion has been absorbed by the Azure Sito Saracen market. Miko, uh, same story here as well. Uh, look at the expansion bubble up, up to 75,000 disc. And now we are back to the cheapest price in eight and a half months. 40,000 to 33,000. Demand is starting to come back down on these two. Uh, for uh, Celadon, Cytoceracin, we are at 50k. Uh, we actually had no real response to the expansion. So this one is definitely not moving in the same way. Same with the Celadon Mycocerosin, basically 100,000 disc for the last seven, seven months. And uh, we're right in the middle of that. So I'm surprised at how mixed the picture is. Here is Golden Sito, definitely up for the expansion, but a bit of a late responder to that one. And at the tail end, you can see how that five day moving average is coming back down below the 20. So we are here also uh, basically absorbing that hype a little bit and coming to a pretty regular price. Golden Mikoto is going to 100,000 ISK, not even on big volumes. So this one might be a supply side problem. Let's take a look at that. 107, 108,000, 108,000 for the sellers, 90,000 for the buyers. So pretty big spread happening here. And clearly it's the supply side that is lacking. So another expensive one. Uh, Lime Sito though, inexpensive. The first one on the one year chart, that's at the lowest range for the year at around 50k. That actually dove down about a month into the expansion. Interesting. Lime Miko is also well, a little bit below average for the last eight months. Pretty average for the year. Then we get Malachite that's yeah, had an August jump and basically went up a little bit for the expansion and is still on that same range. All right, Malachite, Mycocerosin, pretty stable. Again, we get a little bit of a wave for the expansion and we get a little bit of a sp um, higher price, but overall it's quite doable, I think. Vermilion then, very bad volume, 75K. We get the expansion uh, actually here. I think uh, speculators overdid it a little bit, went to 100,000 disc. On a couple of days and then actually supplies brought us down to 50k and only now we are at that 75k in the middle of everything but we've, it feels like we're actually pretty well supplied with in some of them like here for vermilion as well clearly since december starting to see some pressure on the price viridian sito is actually pretty low selling for 40 3k it's only one seller of course but below 50,000 for a couple of sellers as well is pretty low and viridian miko is a little bit above average then so very mixed picture here that's definitely a surprise usually uh, we had a far more structured booster gas clouds with for instance if uh, Cytoceracin was plateauing at a high point and clearly jumped up in november you would have that happen across all of the CITOs and not that the next one is actually fully recovering and coming back down to a price from before September, which is the lowest range for the entire year. That's definitely pretty unusual. Uh, now, I don't know the details and perhaps there it's part of how CCP has balanced things through these faction warfare ships that are actually differentiating in the need for the uh, Cytoceracin. They do have these handles now that they can do to try and, uh, you know, steer the economy a little bit, try and keep things healthy, try and maintain value and, and not get too many uh, bottlenecks. And they're definitely willing to do that. And as a result, we've got a very mixed picture here in the gas cloud markets. I think overall we're maybe not even that expensive. I think most of the uh, rush for the expansion has been uh, absorbed by most of the markets. And that is perhaps 
why uh, now that we're settling with all of these extra faction warfare ships perhaps that hype is di diving down a little bit that that is giving a little bit of breeding room for uh, for our tactical destroyers that in my opinion have been suffering from uh, lacking its niche its interest and uh, maybe this is also happening because well, we saw that some take two ships are going up in price command ships cruisers are becoming more expensive and then that value proposition for the tactical destroyer goes up all of a sudden in price with utility and uh, their uniqueness that they bring as well that interest is back there and maybe we uh, see a little bit more uh, action in the price for these tactical destroyers but for the gas cloud materials in general I, I could quickly go through the compressed ones as well but that's like a big list and you can see that the volumes tend to not be too good for prices um, price formation so these do give like very difficult charts but here again uh, nothing to spot so you, you've got the amber that clearly is still uh, amber situ at least that is still plateauing and very expensive but everything else you can clearly see that we have basically chewed through the expansion hype and that we are decently affordable and doable in most of these gas uh, cloud materials so overall yeah, I'm, I'm a bit surprised by that i thought maybe we would be more expensive and definitely that we would have again a, a similar pattern in all the Cedos or most of the Cedo Saracens and most of the Miko Saracens, but that is not happening. Uh, very diverse all of a sudden. Pretty, pretty damn interesting in my book. That is going to be it for this Eve Talk, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time.